everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be making a DIY concrete tabletop. Yeah, so if y'all didn't see our backyard idea video, we created an outdoor like L bench that we are now gonna turn into a concrete tabletop because we never used the bench. It was always really hot outside. We never wanted to hang out outside, but we are always doing DIY, so we'll definitely use that space. So I'm really excited for that. So as usual, we're first gonna start with everything that we need to make it. But everything's so big and there's so much stuff involved in this DIY that we didn't feel like bringing everything inside. So everything's set up in the backyard. So we're gonna take you guys out there, show you everything that we have and then get started. All right, so guys, this is our first time making something with concrete. So if y'all have tips and tricks, please leave them in the comments below. Not only will we appreciate them, but all of the viewers will appreciate them too. So there's many different ways that you can make a concrete tabletop. We're gonna use the cast in place method, which is you make your mold in the place where you want your concrete to stay. You're not gonna move it or flip it or anything like that. We're gonna pour the concrete into the mold, let it cure, and then all we remove are the frame boards. So you're gonna see. So the only difference with this is you wanna be sure once you pour your concrete that it's nice and smooth because this is gonna be the top of your table. Yeah. So that's the only issue that we're probably gonna run into. I'm saying that now, but. There's gonna be many more, but hopefully not that many. So finally, we're gonna go over everything that we need to make it. All right. So first up, you need your base or whatever you're gonna be building the bottom part of your frame with. Mm -hmm. We're using a treated plywood. You specifically want treated if yes. you're gonna be doing this method because it is gonna be outdoors. So we're gonna have three quarter inch plywood. We're doing the width two feet, but to make things easier, we just got one sheet of plywood and had it cut directly down the middle long ways while we were at Lowe's because yep. they do one free cut with your purchase of wood. So I do recommend doing that if you are gonna have 24 inches or smaller for the width of your table. Along with the base, you need frame boards. We want our tabletop to be about two inches in height. So we got one by threes for the frame mm -hmm. and these are by eight foot. So we got four total. You also need some screws to attach the frame to the base. So we're using inch and a quarter wood screws and to reinforce the concrete, we decided to get rebar. We got the sheet to make things easier because yeah. it's already in this grid shape that you need. We've got concrete tools so these are trowels one of them you're gonna use to flatten the top of your table here we have a concrete edger basically kind of like a trowel but it has a curved edge so this is gonna help make our edges rounded so the edge of the table will not be extremely sharp and to mix the concrete you can use a five gallon bucket and a shovel but we bought <laughs> a this, pancake mixer. This giant mixer <laughs> that goes onto a drill. Now, I wouldn't use a battery operated drill for this just because the concrete's gonna be really thick and I'm already hesitant to see if this is gonna work. You wanna get a corded drill that has higher amps, higher voltage to be able to mix this concrete with a drill bit and be successful. Buckets. Our plan here is to mix and pour as quick as possible, being that we're using quickcrete. I'm gonna mix these, pour them, and then we'll swap positions and let her kind of finish and kind of just pack down that concrete while I'm mixing. And then, of course, you're gonna need whatever type of concrete you wanna use. We're using a high strength quickcrete. We have four bags per side of table. So we'll let you guys know how many bags we end up using for the space. But we wanted to be sure that we had more rather than less. I can't even imagine running out of concrete oh. halfway through putting your table together. Actually one last item There's that more. we did not get because they didn't have it at Lowe's. Flow control and it is a little powder packet. Once you add that to the concrete, it gives it like a pancake mixture. In. That's the only thing I wish we had. Something else that is optional that you can get once you are finished with your tabletop is some type of sealer or finish for the top and that is everything that you need finally it is the time yes. to build i'm really excited but i'm also nervous to see how it's going to turn out so like we mentioned this area that we're building our table in was our little chill spot area so we do need to clean it up and get everything pulled out as you can see it's turned into a junk collecting area because we never used it to hang out we need to get rid of all of this stuff 
As you can see, the cinder block bench was built only three rows high. So we are going to be adding two more rows of cinder blocks. We wanted it to be at waist height so that it's easiest to work on since we will be standing when we're working at this area. We did also add cinder blocks to the back side just to add some extra support for the tabletop. All right, so I just placed the board up just to kind of get a visual on the length that I want. Right now, this board is seven feet long, which only leaves me with four feet on this side. And I wanted them to be a little bit similar to size. So I'm actually gonna cut this one five foot, and then this one is gonna be six foot. So they're a little bit closer to size. We're gonna do one table at a time. So we're just gonna start with one, the first one. Let's get started. I'm super excited to get this project going. So. Woo! Pan. Board here? Mm -hmm. I'm tired of y'all. <laughs> so to create our corners perfectly, we're actually gonna cut our sideboards three quarter inch longer on both sides so that we don't have a crease. We want one of the boards to overlap on the corner. I'm gonna show you guys here in just a second. I already know it's five foot three. Jen's in my way, stuffed on her toe, can't you see? We've built many frames and messed up the measurements. So today, this is not gonna happen. We're gonna do it perfect today. So we're gonna do, instead of 24 inches, we're gonna do 25 and a half. No! So we've got our sideboards. Hello. I'm going to cut for the length now. We've got two 25 and a half inch boards here. That gives us 24 inches plus three quarters on each side because these are three quarter inch thick. All right. So I'm going to make my measurement for the length. So 63 inches exactly. All right, so I finished cutting the frame. We're gonna go ahead and assemble the frame and then pour some concrete. Okay, to make things easier here so that I have two inches all the way across from my height, I'm gonna make a little template here. So I'm gonna measure this two inches high, make it so much easier than having to balance this guy as I go. So we've got our two inch template here and we're gonna start screwing this guy in. I'm gonna pre-drill screws six inches apart all the way along and then I'm gonna screw it into the base. The base. I'm going to screw it into the base. I'm gonna slap it the base. <laughs> slap the base big time. No, that's that? a reggae guy. Slap the base. Drill bit, baby, let's do it. All right, so now that we've done both the front and the back, we're gonna attach the ends. Now, remember that we cut these boards three quarter of an inch extra on each side. So now you can see why we did that and how it's lining up perfectly. So now that we have it all lined up, we're gonna screw it into place and we'll be done with the frame. Look at that. Perfection. Let me show you the inside. Now we have this nice, tight corner. Whereas if we stopped and cut here, we would have a little bit of a gap and we wouldn't have the extra support. So these two boards would want to separate once we started adding the concrete. And what we have is we have a screw going into here at the top and down here mm -hmm. in the bottom. Great news. I'm bright, 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 bright. So we finished the frame. We finished the frame. Time to set this board in place and then we're going to start mixing and pouring cement. We're gonna clean out our frame first. Another thing, we're not using melamine, melamine, whatever type of wood, the laminate type that's already smooth so that the concrete doesn't stick to it. Since we're using pine boards instead, we do have to oil them up beforehand. If not, then the concrete will stick to it. And we are gonna pour starting from the center of our frame. 
going outwards. We are also going to cut our rebar before we start mixing. I'm gonna measure the inside of this, subtract an inch because you don't want the metal to be exposed or protrude through the concrete. So we want it all hidden within the concrete table. So I'm gonna shrink it one inch all the way around. You can just use wire cutters. If not, you need a sawzall with a metal cutting blade. So since the frame is 24 by 63, we cut the rebar at 22 by 61. So you can see there's a one inch gap between the rebar and the end of our concrete. So we know for sure none of this is gonna show. Oh my gosh, look guys, it's getting serious in here. We've got our cake mixer on the drill. So it does recommend using around three quarts. So I think we're gonna start there or maybe even a little less to begin mixing. See how the consistency is before we add any more. You don't want it too liquidy because the more liquid, the weaker the concrete. And the longer so. it'll take to cure. And that too. So you want so, a perfect mixture. Perfect and you want to mixture. stay consistent between each bag of mixture. You don't want different consistencies in your mixture because you will be able to tell. You can use an electric sander. Now these are used to vibrate the structure after you pour your concrete because what you want to do is you want to get all those air bubbles up to the top of the surface and let them pop so that those air bubbles fill with concrete so you have no weak points in your concrete. Now that we've got our base half full, we're going to go ahead and place the rebar in there and then cover it with another two buckets of concrete. ensure that the top of the table is as level and flat as possible we're gonna take a scrap piece of wood and screed the top basically you just place this board on top of our side frames and move it back and forth as you push the concrete across the top recommend taping your screw holes so if any concrete gets on them it doesn't dry inside so that you can't then take your screws out so we decided against using the edging trowel because it's already so perfect and flat we don't want to mess with it since this is our first concrete piece we don't want to go in and make any mess ups at the last minute if the edge is really sharp then we'll go in with a sander to sand the edge so that it isn't as sharp so now we're gonna wait for that to cure it'll take about three days and then we're gonna remove our sides of our frame so now that that side is complete we're gonna go ahead and move on to this side so this part will be a time lapse since it's the exact same steps as we did for the first side the only difference with this side is as you can see we do have a fence here so we will have to build our tabletop to curve around these poles so we are going to custom fit this one to work with our fence here
right. So that was pretty easy to make. I am and satisfying. Super, yeah, it very was satisfying. very satisfying to watch. I can't wait to see it in time lapse because it's gonna be even more satisfying. That's be really cool, yeah. But it was really easy to make, and I hope it comes out as easy as it was to make. And it's yeah. Like, I hope it's easy to take these boards off, and I hope it dries as nice as it looks right now. I mean, but we'll see. All right, so here it is, 48 hours later and we're ready to take the edges off. Only problem, guys, we're pretty sure a possum got on this while it was drying. It definitely did. Look at these freaking paw marks all the way across. And they don't look like cat paw prints, so it can't be from our cat, but yeah. it still looks good. And we're probably gonna sand it. Excited. It looks so, so good. Sanded. All right, I hope it doesn't crumble. <gasps> look at those claw marks. What? Here we go, guys. Are we ready? All this hard work? Did it work? Wow. Dang. <gasps> so good. I like that you can't see all the big rocks. That's what we were worried about. Not an issue, but I think we should go over this with a file. We love how it came out. Extremely heavy. It's even heavy just to push it. So if you're planning to flip it upside down, you do need a lot of help for that. We put four 80 pound bags in there. Because you can see the front part of the plywood, I am gonna go over this with some paint just to cover it up so that you can't tell that it's a piece of plywood. I'm just using some exterior black paint for this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye, Bye guys. guys. All right, guys, this is probably not gonna be in the video, but we're cutting these fence boards because there's a thousand wasps nest in there. Oh my God. Nuh-uh. Oh my, oh my God. Uh-uh. I swear to God. How big? Big! What am I gonna do about the other five wasp nests back there? Five? Okay. Really? What? I thought I saw some. Oh! Oh, there's a lizard. Oh, there ah! he is! What I told you. What's the thing? This is like playing Russian roulette. Like, which one is gonna be the wasp nest? I'll let you know. Better. <gasps> you didn't let me know. Babe, I didn't see it. You didn't let me know. Found the mother load. Look at that. Oh my god, the lizard eggs! No way. I just found the lizard eggs. Stop. I swear. These lizards have been living in our backyard for- Stop. Yes. Oh my god. Where? Right there. Where? Right there. Look, it's open on that side. Oh my god! It already has. There's more in there, look. I feel kind of bad. Where's the lizard? <gasps> uh -huh. So cute! Part two, part three. It's Attack of the Lizards. Y'all missed it. We turned the camera off for like five minutes. I was cutting this board down here. The lizard jumped on my leg, started crawling up my leg. I freaked out. I screamed like as if I'd cut a finger off or something. Jen came running outside. And now we got a lizard right here eyeing me down. 